Hey everybody, um, as Damar said, my name's uh, Sebastian. Um, I'm an artist mentor in the Brimbank Youth Services Urban Art Program. Uh, and I guess I'll talk a little bit about how I, how I got to where I am and what I think about graffiti and maybe highlight some of the stuff that hasn't really been mentioned. Um, so I got interested in it when I was in primary school and I've always been into drawing and things like that. So for me it was uh, kind of, I guess maybe as a child you're more susceptible to this kind of stuff. But when I first started seeing graffiti on walls, I wasn't offended by it or threatened. I was intrigued and I thought it was cool. Um, <coughs> so, you know, that continued throughout high school and, you know, all I saw it as was writing on walls. I didn't see it as offensive or anything like that. I was just, I was just amazed by it, to be honest. Um, and I enjoyed being a witness to it. I think it's a very expressive art form and I think you could argue that it's probably the biggest uh, global art movement in the last hundred years or so. Um, when I began VCE, uh, I had a friend whose mum worked in the children's courts and she told my friend and I about a graffiti program in Fitzroy with the city of Yarra. So my friend and I began attending the program, which uh, came to be known as Napier Studios. Some of you may have heard of it. Uh, and I guess uh, whilst I was there, I was able to hone my spray painting technique uh, in, a, in a comfortable environment with free spray paint, which is pretty awesome if you're into graffiti, because uh, spray cans are very expensive if they're good. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, I was given the opportunity to design and paint murals. Uh, up until the point of going to the program, that was pretty much restricted to me mucking around on the streets. I'll admit it, I used to go out and paint on the streets. Um, I never intended to harm anybody or offend anybody. It was never about that. Um, so, I mean, during this time, I was able to meet like-minded people. Uh, Lots of uh, friendly, very professional, very enthusiastic mentors and staff working at uh, Napier Studios. Also uh, mentoring by professional artists. Um, we had various people come in, some who were street artists and did stencils, and then some who were more freehand spray painters. Um, I, was, I was much more interested in the freehand spray painting kind of side of things. Um, <coughs> And so, yeah, I mean, the, pr the mentoring was very, was very useful, as you would expect, and the program, uh, program was run and overseen by um, various people, including Charlotte Hilda, who's now one of my superiors, and Damar. So, I mean, I, I knew them when I was 16 or 17. In 2007, uh, on the recommendation of uh, one of the women who was running the program at the time, her name was Emma Bathgate, um, she recommended that I apply for a program that was run by the National Gallery of Victoria called the Young Ambassadors Program. Uh, I did apply for it and I was accepted into it, which was really good. So I would, I'm just talking about that just as an example of, uh, I guess, a successful recommendation or a pathways kind of idea of, you know, integrating kind of artistic profession and things like that. Um, I will also highlight that I'm not a marginalized youth. I'm just a like middle class white kid, so. Um, <laughs> But I liked graffiti. Um, so yeah, uh, after that, uh, after 2007 and doing that for, uh, for about, I think the program ran for about six months, so that was like a direct result of being involved with this graffiti program and it helped me greatly. Um, and then in 2009, after being a regular participant in Napier Studios for several years, um, I was offered a job as a mentor slash artist slash youth worker at Napier Studios. So. And I don't have any youth work qualifications, which is pretty good. Um, but that was, I mean, really, that's like pretty much a dream job if you're, into, if you're into graffiti and art. And then, you know, people say, do you want to go and work with kids that are pretty much like you doing graffiti? You're just, yes, I do. Um, so that was, that, was, that was an amazing moment. Um, and I worked at Napier Studios in this capacity from 2009 until 2011 uh, under Adrian Doyle, who some of you may have heard of. He's now works closely with the City of Melbourne in their street art and youth art programs. Um, and he was the program's facilitator from around 2008 until the program's closure in 2011, which uh, I think was a bad idea. Um, also in 2009, I began a Bachelor of Fine Art and Drawing at RMIT. Um, and I, like I said, I always liked art, so uh, I probably would have done that anyway, but being involved with uh, Napier Studios and things like that kind of made me realize that I should probably go and study this thing that I loved. Um, 
So during my time as a mentor and youth worker at Napier Studios, um, I was able to share my knowledge of and passion for the art form of spray painting with lots of young people. Um, and the other thing is I learnt a lot from the young dudes who were going to the workshops. Um, I could watch the stylistic and conceptual kind of ideas of aerosol art change from person to person. Um, and I got some, uh, quite a lot of insight regarding the realities of the, of the young guys that were there. Some who reminded me of myself being, you know, going to pretty decent sc state schools and having fairly kind of smooth ride. And then some who had the direct opposite experience, but all of us being there in that same environment, united by this love of graffiti and uh, street culture and everything like that. Um, so it was pretty, it was pretty inspiring. Um, and I was, you know, I was, I was, happy to work with these kids who were so similar to myself. It was, it was satisfying. <laughs> Maybe that makes me a narcissist or I don't know. <laughs> um, and I've got to say, for all the negative press and condemnation of, uh, of graffiti, uh, it's pretty common to read in the newspapers. Uh, graffiti writers are described as mindless vandals and idiots. Um, I resent that accusation and I think it's plain wrong and I think it's bad journalism. Um, all I saw and experienced throughout my kind of, my, these kinds of jobs, and I've done a lot of workshops for various city councils, it's more just uh, Fitzroy, uh, Napier Studios and Brimbank who I've worked for in an extended capacity. Um, but throughout all of this, all I saw was young people with passion and commitment. I didn't see um, criminals or psychopaths or mean, mean nuts. Um, if, if there are people who are involved in graffiti who do have those kinds of things going on, then it's not a result of graffiti, it's a result of other things entirely. Um, so in March 2012, after the completion of my degree, uh, I began working with Brimbank. And uh, I haven't really looked back, I definitely enjoy working this, in this way and um, I can say with confidence that uh, our program has definitely um, uh, enhanced a lot of the young dudes uh, passion for what they do and uh, in a lot of cases it's made them want to move into professional uh, professional arenas. I would say that most of them have definitely reduced their um, tagging and things like that um, in light of the fact that they're now able to hone their skills and become more artistic in their endeavours rather than you know going out and bombing stuff. Um, you know but I think that also has a place and I think it's worth trying to understand uh, the reasons for, for things like tagging and what it actually means to the people that do it. Um, I know that it's probably not visually stimulating for most people, but for the people that do it, it is. So I guess it comes down to a kind of stylistic idea. And uh, it's always going to be a difficult, difficult topic. You can never really justify it uh, to somebody who doesn't like it. And, you know, there's, everybody has a right to dislike or like it, but uh, it's, not, it's not done with a view to... Uh, upsetting anybody. It's really not done with antisocial intentions most of the time. Um, so yeah, I mean, I can say with confidence that allowing, uh, allowing a, pro a program like ours and uh, allowing it to be funded and to have these kinds of projects where we do, you know, this, we had this small window of time to complete six murals. Um, like Dame I was saying, it's, uh, the, the, the window was, was difficult, it was short, but there was an advantage to it in that it forced the most committed members of our of our team to uh, work very hard and all of them progressed significantly just over this small space of time so it's been very beneficial in terms of them uh, advancing their artistic ability and things like that and uh, they definitely have uh, you know I mean when you speak to them a lot of these guys uh, don't think that you know they live in Sunshine, St Albans, one of them lives in Hillside which was mentioned before and if you ask them about why they get into graffiti, they generally will say that there's nothing else to do in those places. So it's about, uh, it's about uh, occupying themselves and belonging to a group. It's about many social things. Um, and to provide them with a chance to uh, use good quality spray paint to do proper murals and to learn from each other and share each other's experience and their knowledge and things like that, to cultivate a, an enjoyment of art rather than to condemn things is, is really the only way to, to deal with graffiti because uh, to remove it and to use punitive measures to deal with it is uh, not going to deal with it at all. And uh, these kinds of mural projects and things like that are really the only intelligent way to, to deal with graffiti uh, vandalism, as they call it.
So yeah, that's that's my opinion. <laughs> Thanks everyone. <laughs>